Hi, welcome to Zabas Corner, a space where the goal is to learn together, to inspire, to motivate, to grow. Today we are pressing on first time verse 17, um, verses 1 through 36. And this is where Goliath has come out to taunt the children of Israel. Um, monstrously huge person by all measurements. So huge, he needed a whole nother human being to carry his shield. And his spear was described pretty much as a beam. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the soldiers of Israel are frightened. He's out there taunting them. Hey, where's that God? You see you guys, self? Uh huh. Can he come get you for me? And they were kind of proving his points by running away. Um... And then David gets sent down to the battle line by his father to bring food for his brothers. And when he gets there, he finds out, well, there's no fighting going on. There is some dude shouting insults to the children of Israel. So what's going on? And so now he's asking questions. Well, what exactly is happening here? Now, this is the first curious part to me. His brother, Eliab, I believe, um... His oldest brother, Eliab, this is in verse 28, finds out that David is asking questions and his response is, well, what are you doing here anyway? What about those few little sheep you're supposed to be taking care of? I know about you. You know, all of a sudden you're prideful. You just want to see the battle. Why are you here? Which to me was such an odd response. There is nothing we've read about that suggests that David is the kind of person that goes into situations just almost like a gossip. I mean, when I read it, that's, oh, you're, you're just, you want to come and see what you can gossip about. It was such an odd reaction until I remembered uh, at this point, David had already been anointed. Remember when the previous chapter, when Samuel went to the house, Eliab was actually who Samuel was going to anoint. He looked tall, he looked fair. Until God told him, hey, we're not looking at physical appearances here. And ultimately, David, the youngest one, got anointed. So I suspect there might have been a little hint of resentment from that because the brother's response to David seemed out of left field to me. Anywho, that, um, as I cleared... My curiosity on that, I went on. And David went, kept around asking, I'm glad David didn't allow his brother's response to bother him, which a lot of us would do. The minute someone says something nasty or something uncomfortable or something slightly derogatory about whatever it is we are doing, we either get derailed trying to answer them um and losing focus of what we are doing and where we are going or we get discouraged so easily and we allow other people's comments to deflate our confidence or the courage we've built so i'm happy david just asked his brother well what did i do now i'm only asking a question and he leaves him there and he continues asking his question i really like that reaction and then finally, David's question gets reported to the king and he gets um, sent for by the king. So that's where it ends. Um, actually, it's verse 31, not 36. ends in verse 31. Um, my takeaway from this segment was David's boldness and courage. Like, it's so amazing to me how bold and how courageous david was or even when you read further down actually if you read from 32 through 37 how bold david was before the king recounting his past experiences and saying i'll go fight him it's really amazing to me the amount of 
boldness and courage it would take. And he had fought lions and bears before, but they were not in comparison to the giant that was Goliath. But David felt so bold to at least go try. And the thing that irritated him the most was the way Goliath was taunting God. David did not like that at all. The way he asked, uh, I think I believe it's verse, verse 26. Who is this pagan Philistine anyway that he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? That did not sit well with David. And so, just, I'm thinking, it got me to thinking in my own life, areas where I might need a little more, bit more boldness, be more courageous, be more confident. If a little boy like David was so confident about Goliath, so outraged that a problem, a mountain, a giant like Goliath was defying the people of God. How about me? How about us? In our lives, is there a situation, a person, is something that seems so huge and so immovable that we've been allowing to defy God's will in our lives? Have we developed the boldness and the courage and the confidence to tackle that issue and that situation? No matter how daunting it looks, what if we take the first step in trying to tackle that issue? Trying to topple that giant? I mean, a lot of us know the story with Goliath and I will have a recording for that but just to dip into it a little bit he only used a stone to defeat Goliath before that he went through trying to find an armor that would fit and then he he essentially the the weapon he had used before that he had used when God delivered him from other enemies. He decided to use that. And he went with his faith in God. But the most important thing to me is he took a step. If David hadn't asked the questions, I said, okay, I will go fight. He would not have gone through the period where he was trying to figure out what which weapon to use. Okay, let me go back to what I'm familiar with. Let me draw from the experiences God has pulled me through. And then he took a step to go fight, and that's how Goliath was defeated. I think too often we don't take a step at all, and that's why we don't find the weapons that we need to defeat whatever situation to defeat whatever giant, whatever mountain we are battling. So we need to take a step. Even now that I'm talking, it's just, um, I'm halting a little bit because it's making me think. Even in my own life, areas where I need to take a step of faith, go forward trying to tackle the situation while praying of course believing in god but taking a step and by taking a step god will lead us to the weapons to the opportunities to whatever it is we need to overcome that situation so that was my takeaway from those verses. Like it's it's even the more I speak, I talk, um, the more I'm recording this, it's making me making me reflect even more and making me think. 
And so, as always, I would love to hear what your takeaway from those verses are. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Whatever comments you've got, if you're inspired, please share. And as always, remain blessed.